is uh, the approval of the minutes of the April 4th, 2011 meeting. Um, committee members, you've received these, you've had a chance to review them. Any comments, changes, I have, I actually, revisions? I did have a question. Um, the last, uh, the last line of the first paragraph, it says when the uh, graduate underclasses are not there. Is that, what does that mean? Right above the word says public comment on the first page. It says graduate underclasses. I was just wondering what that meant. Maybe I just missed the boat here. I'm sorry, I, can't, I don't see it, Doug. It says under public comment. Public comment. Right above. When the graduate underclasses. The, no. the big paragraph on the first page, Mark. Okay. I'm sure it's just a typo. Undergraduate okay. Classes. It's undergraduate classes. Yeah, it's the undergraduate classes. All right. <clears throat> what was the other one? Oh. What was this? This is uh, for the for the uh, top of three. We moved for approval, is that right? It wasn't real clear to me. Are you asking about the top of page three? Yes. Yes, we had, I had made the motion that all, uh, with the exception of the amendment that I made, that all the other terms of the prior recommendations remain the same. Okay, I want to be yep. sure about that. That's what I said. Then I, then I move we adopt the minutes as, or approve the minutes as, as written. Okay. Except for that one change. change Except for that one change. Very good. Uh, second. I'll second. Any other questions, revisions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Uh, first you. on the agenda is subdivision 2011 S05 sketch plan of Bentley Homes to subdivide existing 4.634 acre parcel into 12 residential lots at 1430 County Line Road. <clears throat> the applicants here. Um, at the last um, last month's planning commission meeting, um, and has been the long-standing policy of this commission not to allow public comment during sketch plan phases since no deliberation and no decisions have been made. However, in the meantime, I've been requested by the Board of Commissioners to allow on this application that public comment will be heard. So what we will do is we'll have Dan give his presentation, we'll have the applicant give their presentation, We'll hear from the Planning Commission as to their concerns of this and then have public comment and we would ask that it be limited in time and scope and not be repetitive. With that, Dan. Okay, thank you very much. Just to uh, refresh everybody's memory where we are, uh, this is the same layout that we saw uh, last month, County Line Road running in a, a north-south direction across the top of the plan, Lancaster Avenue across the bottom, Airedale Road is off to the right. And Lowry's Lane is off to the left. It's uh, currently uh, it's about a four and a half acre parcel, an existing house with an existing uh, barn and some uh, small sheds and outbuildings. There is a gravel driveway that is kind of a horseshoe shape that runs across here. There is a pond located at the bottom right hand corner, right behind a wall that parallels Lancaster Avenue. So uh, if you look over the wall, you can uh, see a pond that's there. Uh, the applicant has uh, submitted two plans, uh, kind of similar in that there's 12 lots. Um, they have tweaked it a fair amount. Um, what I'll show you is, is this first one, which is referred to as, as Plan 2A. Uh, what we have, again, County Line Road across the top, Lancaster Avenue on the bottom. The properties are shown with the green lines dividing them. The proposed homes are shown in the red area and the garage or the driveways leading either to County Line Road or to the proposed driveway is shown in blue. There is a wide, if, if you recall last month, there were two separate driveways that each came in and fed three houses. Uh, the, the proposed, this proposal shows a wider driveway that comes in to a circle, a, uh, uh, I believe it was a 40 foot diameter, was it 40 or 60? I think it's a 60 foot diameter circle that's shown here which textured and then it splits off in both directions. And they have a conservation easement shown in the bottom corner. 
Let me just flip over to plan two. Again, the houses are uh, basically the exact same location. The driveway has been changed a little bit. Again, we have the wide driveway coming down and splitting in this circle and feeding the, the six homes at the bottom. Uh, in this case, there's an open space. So really the only difference is it's a conservation easement in the corner on the one plan, and now it's an open space. Um, they do show a driveway passing through the open space to feed lots seven and eight. So there were uh, several comments from the Subdivision Advisory Committee. Specifically, we had eight comments on both plans, or a total of eight comments for both plans. Uh, the first comment refers to Section 255.27i, where the subdivision code requires that no more than three single-family homes or three lots front on a private driveway. So this plan, both plans show eight lots fronting on a driveway. Item number two refers to Section 255.27i6, again, of the subdivision code that refers to common driveways passing between single family homes. So we have, uh, I pointed out lots three and four, but so there's a driveway passing between lot three and four up here, but you could interpret it that even the driveway that goes through the, that runs parallel with County Line Road is between single family homes. So there's more cases than what I pointed out in the memo. Item number three is asking the applicant just to identify wetlands, and this is really more of a, a, a preliminary or a final plan. Item number four refers to section 255.37K, asking that the applicant install a four-foot wide sidewalk on the Lancaster Avenue. Number five refers to the uh, the width to depth ratio, or excuse me, the depth to width ratio of two and a half to one. There, it appears that lots nine and 10 exceed this ratio, and that's a reference to section 255.34E. Item number six is just asking for clarification regard item six and seven. It's really asking for clarification on the open space or the conservation easement. So the uh, the Subdivision Advisory Committee wasn't sure how those areas were going to be handled uh, as things progressed. And item number eight is referring or is asking for more detail on this circle um, and just looking for more detail about how that's going to be constructed. We weren't sure if the center area is actually a, a paved, a paved area or an open area. I'm hearing it's paved because um, there is a concern about emergency vehicle access. Uh, I did speak to the Radnor Fire Company and asked him to look at the plans we reviewed last month, and he did express a little bit of a concern about access because of the narrow width of the driveway. Uh, I have not passed these plans on to them at this point. Uh, I assume that this is a better plan since the driveway is twice the width, so there should be better access for emergency vehicles. And they were the comments from the staff. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Oh, why don't we move and have the applicant give a presentation? I know they've got some things to show us. And then we'll go to uh, the Planning Commission asking questions and expressing concerns. Uh, I'm sorry, can I have your eight, list of eight things? Uh, yeah. Respond to them. Yeah. You can see them? No. Good evening. I'm Tom Bentley. Um, well, first of all, last time we were in here, you asked us to be a little bit more creative and to try and um, have a little differenti differentiation to combine the two driveways. And so basically what we've done with the, uh, the plan <clears throat> is we've done that. And we basically could call that road that comes in a private drive, or we could call it a common drive. Or we could call it any number of things, but it's really about having a good plan, and uh, it was the request to do that. Um, one of the things that's a little confusing is because we drew so many plans, you have a number in front of you, 
but a couple of them show um, that these two houses actually come off the cul-de-sac. So there was a concern that I think um, Mrs. Bogosian brought up uh, last time about having three on one driveway, even though it's in your ordinance. And so we can take uh, lots eight and 10 and bring it off the cul-de-sac, which I think is shown um, right, right here in this plan. So, I mean, we can combine any of these plans. I mean, we're not saying this is a plan we want to have. You asked us to be creative, to, to respond to your, to your request, and actually we think it's a much better plan. We think your idea was a good idea. Um, so what we have with this plan is um, there's only two houses off of a common drive. Um, everybody could bring their trash up to the kind of quasi cul-de-sac here. Um, we could curb that. We could not curb that. Whatever the township thinks is the best thing to do, we can call it a private drive. We can call it a common drive. Um, it really makes no difference to me. Um, it's more expensive to have a private drive because we put curbs and stuff on it. But, um, you know, we can do whatever you please. The other thing this plan allowed us to do is we got <clears throat> two, two access points off of county line. We did meet with the neighbors. Uh, we had two neighbors that came to that meeting and their attorney. And uh, one of the things they expressed was uh, health, safety, and welfare for the, for the future residents and for, for themselves. So we got a, I think we got a, a better plan. And um, you know, we mixed it up a little bit down below. The open space, uh, the open space really is, is in this location because it, it satisfies a two and a half to one requirement you have for lots. When it's in the other location, when it's in the back, um, the lots do not meet the two and a half to one, but it's a much better plan because three, th these three houses are further away from Route 30. So we can do good planning or we can do it by the ordinance. Um, you know, it really depends on, on what you want us to do. Um, the, um, the other thing I wanted to show you is where we started from. <clears throat> um, one person congratulated us for not playing games with the number of lots we showed. I think it was uh, this gentleman right here. And this was our original plan that we were going to come in with. And we knew everybody was going to hate it. Um, it has... Um, 14 lots, no, 16 lots, I'm sorry. And then we figured, well, they'll knock some lots off and we'll go down to the other plan. Um, we decided not to go that route. Um, and what we showed you was what we thought was a good, a good plan. It made sense. The other thing that we did is we went and looked at the neighborhood. These are all... This is all in the same zoning district. This is our property right here. You can see our neighbors adjacent to us, directly adjacent to us. Our lots are, are, are basically the same size they are. If you average these lots and you averaged our lots, I think our lots would actually be a little bit bigger. This is um, a neighborhood down the street. This is a neighborhood down the street. This is a neighborhood down the street. All the same zoning as ours. You can see how open ours is and how dense these are. I'm just trying to tell you that we're not trying to get anything more than what has been done in other parts of the township. The other thing we did is we <clears throat> looked at the neighborhood from a visual point of view, because really when we're, when we're done building here and everybody's living there and the neighbors are concerned about it, what they're going to see, they're not going to see a piece of paper. What they're going to see is the fronts of the homes. So we did an elevation study. Excuse me for being a little unorganized here which I gave you individual handouts. <clears throat> so this basically is an elevation study of, of six homes. On the top is exactly the way ours, well, not exactly. We don't know exactly which homes we're building. But with the setbacks um, that we are required to give and with the plan we presented you, this is the spacing of our houses um, as you would see them driving down uh, county line. This is Hawthorne Road. And these are actual pictures that we took and scoped together. And, you know, they're denser than we are. But, I mean, we don't think the look is that different from what, what they are. 
Um, we're on 70 foot lots, they're on 62 foot lots. And a lot of the areas in the R4 zoning district are, are less than the width of our lots. So <clears throat> the houses in the back will not be seen. They, they drop down the hill. So I mean, really, this is what you're going to see. I don't think it looks that bad. I think it looks um, like a neighborhood. I think it's, uh, it could be denser. We could go down to 55 foot lots. And um, maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should eliminate the common drives going in the back and just you know, have 10 houses on the street. But you know, we have to be economically feasible. And it's hard to be in the building business these days. Um, the people that lived here for 80 years, they have a right to get the maximum value for their house, I mean, for their property. And uh, we think that you know, we're, trying to, we're trying to give that to them. So <clears throat> the, um, we're open for your comments. The, um, I think the new plan. This is the plan I would like to build, with the exception that I'd like to have the open space in the back. I think it's better planning. I'd like these two houses to go off the cul-de-sac. Um, we'd have wider drives coming into only two houses on a common drive instead of the three. Um, we only have uh, five access points um, on the street instead of seven that we used to have. Um, we mixed up the elevations so that some of the driveways came in from the side, some came in from the front. I don't know if you noticed that or not. And one of the reasons we did this, the houses on the ends, we wanted to be a little bit sensitive to the neighbors. We moved both of them in as far as we could to give them more space, and we had a, a straight-in driveway instead of a you know, driveway that came into the side. OK, thank you. Um, Planning Commission, question? I have a question. Um, there's some very impressive trees on this property. And yes. I realize this is um, the sketch plan phase, but have you started to look at how you can preserve some of those trees? Uh, yeah, the trees, the trees, there's some big trees in here. I went out there the other day and looked at them, and um, there's a couple real big ones that are not very healthy, and there's a couple big ones that are very healthy. I mean, we've tried to move whatever we could and save whatever we can. But I mean, until, you, until we know kind of what we're talking about with the sketch plan, it's hard to to go ahead and, and, and actually spend money and do that kind of stuff, you know? And are you um, going to remove the gazebo down by the pond, or is that staying? I like it. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would keep it. Because it looked... Um, Unless it's unsafe. I mean, I haven't walked out. I did, actually, I did walk out there. Yeah. Is yeah. It, is, it, is it in good shape? I don't know. But... Um, do you want it? No. <laughs> oh, that would be a bribe. I can't do that. No. <laughs> Bring it over. Now, the pond, um, it didn't look like a pond to us. A couple of us went and walked and, and took a look. And um, it looked like a, a, an empty pond. Well, it used to be a pond. It, is there, does that It's mean, actually a spring is what it is. is it I mean, spring? There, there's a spring coming out I'm curious out what that is, because it's a very wet season right now, you'd think. Did you see the archway going under Route 30? Did you just see the very tippy top of it? Yep. OK, that yep. archway, who said yep? OK, that, that is all silted in over the years from natural causes and that used to be uh, a regular stream coming through there and maybe at one point it was a, ca a little cattle um, path to go underneath there mm -hmm. but there's about five feet of silt that's filled up that pond um, and you can see where they dammed it up so the dam actually kept the silt back there if you go on the next property to the east right where the gazebo is there's like a little waterfall there mm -hmm. if you go to the next property you can see the ground's a lot lower so they dammed it up made a pond and then over 80 years it filled in with silt, and it filled that archway that went underneath the road. Okay. Um, I had a question about the open space in the, in the, I don't know what we're calling it, the plan with the open spaces in the center. Yes. Um, I don't think you can have open space and fill it with a driveway. Well, I, you, there's nothing in the ordinance <laughs> that says you can't. I mean, but we were just trying to, we were trying to, I mean, we were throwing stuff, you know, you asked us to try and kind of shake it up a little bit, and that's what we did. But you had said that it worked to relieve the zoning issue of the length of the lot versus the width of the lot in that plan, but not the other plan. Isn't it the same width? Why doesn't it make the same impact? Well, I'm kind it of... Look, it looks similar it, in size. 
okay. in the two plans? The way we deal with the frontage for these lots is actually all the lots uh, along Route 30 mm -hmm. technically have frontage along Route 30. So when you put the open space in the back, you basically don't have frontage for these three lots. Okay. So if we could have a waiver on that, then we could have the have the open space in the back. The open space belongs in the back, um, in my opinion. It, it, it's, a, it's okay in the middle, but it just, it, for these people right here, it just gets, this is a lovely spot on the property right here. I don't know if you walked the whole property or not, but this, this whole, this, the old house is right here, right on uh, lots, um, one, two, three. That's, that's not. Actually, no, no, the old, old house. The old, old house. No See, longer standing. The, right, the parents' house. The parents live there. They built a house for their kids right here. Okay. Um, so, anyway, it's a lovely, it's, it's the most, it's, it's the prettiest spot on the property, I think, is right over in here. Okay, well, I would just ask that yeah. the next time the plan comes in that we don't show anything open space that covers a bunch of people's driveways <laughs> and okay. say, oh, this is open space. Yeah, it's a little controversial, mm -hmm. yeah. And I've, I have a question for Dan. Um, uh, I was impressed with how steep the property is. I mean, that's shown um, in the Toba plan. And I wanted to just check with you that you were confident with the steep slope calculations that have been made. Well, I, I didn't get into the steep slopes. I mean, they do show some bands running through the property of steep slopes, but there are a lot that are below our definition of steep, below the 20 percent. Below 20 percent. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions. Mark, do you want us to go in a particular order? Okay. So I actually want to take a step back. Um, okay. Uh, didn't correct this in the minutes because it was, it was said. Uh, Mr. Coniglier and Mr. Bentley stated that it is a buy right plan in the R4 zoning district. Last month, the old plan. And it's not. It wasn't. I, I, I identified four different waivers to Mr. Malloy um, that he didn't disagree with me. The reason I'm saying that is this. It's a lovely property that's going to get subdivided in some, some fashion. Um, and I'm looking to see it be developed in the most sensitive way possible. Sensitive to the Radnor Township neighbors, but actually also to the Lower Marion neighbors um, who will be looking at it because it's, it's those neighbors across the street who will be visually the most impacted by the change. And I was curious, um, this, this drawing you put up where you showed comparable zoning, I what? Uh, the, comparable, the, the lot sizes in the R4 district in Radnor. Right. The uh, bottom right-hand picture where you show Coney, County Line Road doesn't show the zoning across the street in Lower Marion. And I recognize that that's not our purview, but it has an impact on the neighbors. And I, I, if I were to ask for a show of hands, I would imagine many of the people in the audience, and it's a large group tonight, are from Lower Marion. You know, I thought we should have shown that too, but when my engineer did this, he... Yeah. he Preliminary he, plan he, will require it. Yeah, he will right. do it. Okay. Um, so I wanted to get back to... When I went back through the first, when I looked through the first plan really, really, really carefully and glanced, you know, looked at tonight's variation, iterations, you know, there still are some pretty significant uh, waivers that you would need. And different people have different opinions about waivers. Waivers are supposed to be hardship waivers. They're not just supposed to be, well, this is what I'd like to do, so can I have all the waivers so I can do it? They're actually supposed to be hardships. And I do think this particular property has, Julio and I walked it, it's a tough property to subdivide. There are a lot of steep slopes. It's, it's really deep. It's not, it wouldn't even be easy to just split in half necessarily and do two lots. It, it, it's tricky, so I, I grant I you that some, some leeway will be needed probably. Can I just add, sure. jump in here? The, um, and that's one of the reasons we did this elevation study, nice. because we could, we could line up 10 houses across the front, and, and we wouldn't even have the... Yeah, I can't become, imagine how you'd meet our two and a half width times length. Open space, the whole back. Lot requirement. The whole back oh, of, do the whole back lot. Okay. That's I, another plan. I mean, you know, and, yep. and really if you talk about how it looks to the neighbors and everything, um, it would be much more intense than what we've drawn. So the reason I'm going through all this and the reason I'm trying to explain our, the reasons we've done it 
is because we're trying to answer your questions and be sensitive mm -hmm. to how we impact the neighborhood. I mean, I think of there's a lot of great builders on the main line, and in every community we've done on the main line, we've tried to be sensitive to the neighbors, and um, we've built some outstanding projects. I'm, I'm not going to go into them all, but um, I don't think this is in any way out of keeping with the neighborhood, and that's why we, we you know, you talk about the neighbors, you talk about the neighborhood. Um, you know, we think some of these homes will sell for over a million dollars. Yeah, that's um, not a starter home, which is in no, Radnor, it's, which it's is not. what you mentioned last it's month. It's not, but but a couple of the homes along the front. If somebody comes in and they really like the like it, I mean, we sell homes for six hundred thousand dollars that people put four hundred thousand dollars of options into. So it, it 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 could be anywhere. I mean, right. you know. So getting back to the plans, because yeah. then the next one that that I'll call it the scare plan, but I, I it's the one where you put in the the big road. I've got it labeled as a scare plan. Hold on. I, I I'm I'd be curious and. I don't think that it's a good use of your time and money, but I, I would suggest that by the time we had taken out steep slopes and various other requirements, you maybe couldn't have done that particular plan with quite so many homes, but some number of homes with a street and all that. And I don't know that that would be the best plan because it's a big piece of street and that, you know, that doesn't necessarily serve our, our purposes in terms of impervious. But there are, um, I do have a suggestion. Part of our planning, our saldo codes, call for uh, adjoining townships to look at the plans. And I think that this is a particular, um, this would be a particularly good situation where Lower Marion's planning department could look at this, would be happy to look at it, um, and give some input on the plan. Um, they have a huge amount of resources down there. And it does, it is in our saldo that preliminary plans, we can ask for adjoining townships to look at it. And it may be worth everybody's time for that to be the case, given how many Lower Marion neighbors are here. Um, so that's, that's not a requirement for you. It's rather a suggestion for our planning commission that we take, a, take uh, the opportunity to ask Lower Marion planning to look at the plan and give their thoughts on it. Um, so that's one thing. But there are issues with the private driveway coming out onto a major collector. That's a waiver that you would need. Um, you do need to put in sidewalks. A private road or a private driveway? What are you talking about? Well, I have to recheck the number of the code exactly to read the exact uh, 27I. No private driveway shall take access to an arterial or major oh, no, collector street. And that's 27I5. A private road or? Private driveway. OK. Isn't private. there one for private road also? Uh, this was all talking about driveways coming yeah. out. Well, that, that I, maybe I, I, I'm, I'm probably mistaken because I'm not an engineer. Um, when I was trying to present before, what I said is it could be a common driveway, it could be a private driveway, or it could be a private road. You address private roads in your saldo. Right. And we could have a, a, a it, it could actually be a private road, um, which, you know, Dan has already said that it would be required to have granite curbing and, and everything that you would have with a regular road. Okay. Um, so, I, we, we were just trying to keep the impact down. I mean, as soon as you start doing curbs and, and storm drainage and everything like that, then you've got to put in retention basins and you talk about trying to preserve the, you know, the property and have it be more natural, then, then you, you maybe have a couple less houses, but you have a, a lot more damage to trees and, and the site. Right. That's the balance I'm trying to strike. But um, yeah. the, the last comment that I have is, um, what's your plan for the wall on Lancaster Avenue? Well, that's a good question. You know, I try not to worry about trees. things until I have to. I'd love to keep that wall. Um, we went and looked at it with the idea of keeping that wall. If you require us to put a sidewalk along Route 30, which I think is kind of a sidewalk to nowhere, but, you know, we understand what townships uh, are interested in, um, we would lose the wall if we had to put the sidewalk in. We also need a sidewalk on County Line. It's a major collector, so that's it would okay. need one there. Yeah. Maybe you have that in the the planet in actually it wasn't on the comments that i saw yeah no yeah i i'm not sure if i would agree that that section of county line is a major collector i mean certainly the other piece that that's four lanes i would call it's, that i was not looking at this section of county line as a major collector well across the street has it and it's listed in the book as a major collector so that's why i had jotted it down in my notes but we think sidewalks are okay i mean i, I you know i'm i'm believe me when it comes to uh, we're not known as a cheap developer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sidewalks have benefits. I mean, they do. 
it just sometimes it seems I'd rather write a check to the township than have a sidewalk that stops in at one end of my property and stops at the other right. end of my property. And last question. Are you doing this on spec or are you planning to do it, build them as they're, I mean, are you planning to go ahead and build and then sell? I haven't gotten that far yet. No. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. If I could jump in here. Um, actually, what I asked for last month was road. Uh, okay. I made the a comment. A private or? <laughs> I, it should be a road that fits the requirements of the township. Okay. Um, I think we can do that with a private road. Okay. I think we can have well, a, you could. Where yes. you'd have parking and yes. you could have access. And, yep. I, and, and, and I think, actually, I think it was your suggestion, and I think what we have with that, um, qu the quasi cul-de-sac, is um, we have a more of a neighborhood feeling there. And I think that it's, it's, it's better. Well, I think that the plan you presented is definitely an improvement over what you had last month. Uh, however, I still would like to see a road into that cul-de-sac. Uh, a what? A road that comes off of county line and goes to the circle, then take your drives off. That is, that's what it is. It, it, it's it, not a real road. It is. How wide is it? 20, 20, 20 feet. That's not wide enough. Yeah, generally. actually for a private road, we can make it wider, but I mean, the wider you make it, the faster people go, the, uh, the more They're in not going to go that fast on that because it doesn't go anywhere. But uh, the other thing is you still have, what, what are the widths of the driveways that come off the cul-de-sac? Um, this was an artist rendering. My idea, as I said before, was to have um, <coughs> nine and ten come directly off the cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. and then these two and these two would come off the cul-de-sac, and they would be wider in the beginning, like you asked for, so that two cars could pass. They could. Okay, okay. Good. And I told my guys to do that, and on one of these five plans, it's done correctly. I just don't know which one it is. Okay. I, I also wanted to comment uh, is that even though the, you may have frontage on Lancaster Avenue, you don't necessarily have access, because I doubt very much that PennDOT would allow you to have that many <laughs> curb cuts for driveways on there. Um, so I think you need to come off of County Line Road for all the houses as you're doing. We, yeah. uh, so that would probably eliminate your buy right plan. I, I think your buy right plan is kind of impossible, as you mentioned, to do. But this is definitely an improvement, and I like the direction that you're going. The other comment I had actually you already made was that you, uh, the houses across the street are quite different from the neighborhoods that you showed in your illustrations and the aerial maps. And if you look at the um, photograph showing the line drawing on it, you can see what the houses across the street look like. And in the frontage of this property, it looks like there's just two houses that take up the same width of the entire front of your property. So I think it's a little deceptive to show smaller neighborhoods when what, it, what is directly across the street is something that is much larger. Uh, I think your houses are attractive, and I think it's po you're working in the right direction. But I think you need to follow the code with direct, proper drainage, because we do have drainage problems in Redner Township. If that requires curb cuts, sanitary sewers, or not sanitary, but uh, storm sewers and retention and so forth, that's what you need to do. Whoop. Because okay. if you don't, somebody down the road is going to have flooding problems. When your engineers get done with me... Um, You'll do it all. We'll do... We'll, <laughs> the dew from the leaves will be collected. Okay. Um, and I appreciate your comments. The, um, the, the, the subdivision ordinance mentions frontage, not like you have to use that frontage, but it, 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 it does have frontage legally. It's a legal thing. And it really doesn't address that you have to come out where your frontage is. Well, I think logically speaking, it would infer, and again, I've mentioned before, I don't think our code is written all that well. The intent was to have you exit on that road so everybody has their own access. And in flag-shaped lots, you're supposed to have a 20-foot uh, width on the flag for each uh, house that you come off of. So you're nowhere close to that even for two because that would create a 40-foot roadway yeah. there. Well, we have a 40-foot 
access coming back with a 20-foot road, and we can modify that. This is uh, a sketch plan. I, I, I mean, understand this, yeah, that, but, um, you know, it, if you look at the intent of the code, I think you're stretching it a bit in some of the comments that you're making on there. But I, I definitely like the direction you're going here okay. over last week, month. Okay. Skip. Um, I think Julia mentioned uh, the extensive trees that are on the property. Um, have you given any thought to possibly, um, I know you're doing this open space, uh, the lower corner, I'll say the, the bottom most part of that uh, illustration, but I wonder if you could stretch it along Lancaster and make it continuous and run it over to the pond area, which... Uh, unless you do something different there, you're not going to be able to build on anyway. And uh, it would be a sort of a greenway kind of a look. Well, um, I may be a little outspoken on my landscaping techniques, but most of the trees along Lancaster are junk trees. They're, they're, they're maples, and they're, they're, um, they're not really healthy. They've got a lot of vines. Um, my preference would be to uh, replace them with a nice evergreen buffer that would provide uh, you know, a, a good buffer and actually would serve the entire neighborhood to quiet it down from, from Lancaster Avenue. Um, and I think right now we're showing uh, sewer lines going down there. If you, if you put the sidewalk in, you get rid of the wall, most of those trees are going to go anyway. Um, but there are some significant trees on the property, and you know, if we could figure out how many lots we are going to have on this property, we would do everything we could to save the, the good trees on the property. But most of the trees along Lancaster, it looks pretty, it looks nice. But they're 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 all you know maples. Norway maples. Pardon? Are they Norway maples? Uh, Do you know? They're the quick growing weedy kind of maples. Yeah. Okay. Doug. Uh, you, uh, regarding the trees along that area, would you replace them? What? Um, you want to replace them with evergreens? Why wouldn't you replace them with something like uh, the oak or, or maple trees? Well, the evergreens provide a low um, year-round buffer from Lancaster. Um, they're green in the winter. They're green in the summer. Um, I like evergreens. My, my customers like evergreens. I mean, we would, we would put a couple of other trees in there, but, I mean, basically evergreens can't grow underneath... I don't know if you've ever seen somebody that came into an area and put a row of evergreens uh, underneath some other trees with the idea of buffering, like out a road or something. Um, yeah. You know, in five years they're dead. They just, they just won't grow unless they have full light. All right. Um, you also, you seem to have an awful lot more trees on the, on the, the plan that you show there along the road than you do on the, uh, the, the thing that shows the different houses, the different house styles. Or am I misreading it? Now, that would be a very appropriate place to have a nice oak tree along the front there to get the nice shading, and um, there's not a lot of buffering that you need along County Line Road. Um, is that what you're talking about, along the elevation study? Yes, that's what I was talking about. So you would have, you would plant more like, you'd plant more of the, uh, the tall deciduous trees there rather than the evergreens along County Line? Yeah, we would mix them in. Dan, when is this going to go to shade tree? It won't. It, remember, this is sketch plan. No, no, it's a preliminary, preliminary plan. Preliminary. Phase. That's my question. When, when, preliminary. When? preliminary. Yeah, they're going to need more you. detail at this okay. point, so this isn't enough information for them to right. make any judgment. And uh, you know that you have several driveways that have steep slopes going through them. And I, I would be remiss, as Mr. Gammer's here, I'm sure, if I didn't comment that whether or not they were man made doesn't matter unless they were done with a grading permit. So some of the driveways have steep slopes in them. Yeah. And that would be a problem. Just pointing that yeah, out. Yeah, I'm probably going to let my attorney address that because I think that uh, there was a case that went to a higher court and we think it's completely different in this case. And we have historic, well, I'll just address it. Okay. Um, and we have historical pictures that show where the, the buildings were and where the steep slopes are. And we also could do soil studies to show that they were man-made. Um, I think the case that you're talking about, I did a little research when I followed it. It was really a, a, a much bigger steep slope, and it, it, it was probably, I don't want to say anything's going to upset anybody, but it probably was a real steep slope. Um, these are very small bands. Um, 
if you go out there and look at the site and you stand where they are, you can see where the structure is, you can see where the, 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 the backfill is placed. I mean, one of them is next to a retaining wall. Oh, yeah. I, I walked the yeah. property yeah. and just that yeah. court case, the distinction was whether or not ultimately in Radnor it came down to whether or not there was a grading permit. Yeah. Anyway, I noticed a few of the driveways have yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Any further comments? Yeah, I have a question actually. Uh, between the wall and the roadway, how much distance is there? What's the space? On I think it's about um, 10 to 12 feet. 10 to 12 feet. And what is the grade of what's between? There? It's, uh, it's man-made steep slopes. But what is it? Is it very uh, steep? I'd say it's like 20% probably. 20%? Yeah, 15 okay. to 20%. This is an area that I, you know I fought sidewalks on Atterbury property. I was very vehemently against it. This is an area that I think needs sidewalks because of the number of people that walk to the train station that walk from the apartments there to Villanova University and so forth. And I think uh, there are some worn paths along there uh, for people not having something to walk on. So again, I think if this were to be developed, that it would be important to have a sidewalk there, even if it's narrower. Uh, and I think the idea of having the open space along the wall there would be great. Then you could put a little path inside that wall, like you suggested at Atterbury, and uh, you would have the people away from the, um, the roadway. Excuse me, I'm hoarse. But, uh, you know, I, I think a sidewalk there is very important. I think if we have the sidewalk, it, it, we'll, we'll do it. I mean, it's, it's not a question of, um, and there's no argument there. The, um, if you do the sidewalk, the wall is history. There's no way that you could do the sidewalk and keep the wall. Um, but. Uh, well, they kept the fence at Atterbury's property because of a path that went behind it. So but did they, did they have a slope going they from They had the, a really bad slope there. Did they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if we can build a sidewalk And on you have a lot side. more space between where that wall is and the roadway than is on uh, Newtown Road. It, in some areas, it's like this. It's very steep. You'll come up with something. <laughs> okay. Further comments from the Planning Commission at this point in time? Okay. Do you want us to leave our displays up why don't here? You, why don't you leave them up there? Okay. Um, we'll take uh, public comment at this point in time. Uh, just a reminder that this is a sketch plan. It was an optional plan submitted by the applicant that he did not have to do. Um, he's seeking input for his plan uh, to obviously uh, adjust things going forward into the preliminary plan review, and uh, we'll take it from there. Mr. Greenfield, I assume you represent some neighbors. I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Members of the Commission, uh, the problems with this plan, and you've highlighted a number of them, stem from the fact that the developer does not want to comply with township regulations for streets. Uh, Mr. Bentley made reference to the fact that he could turn this into a private street, but if he did so, he would then be in violation uh, under this plan of uh, 25527E1 because he would have more than five lots fronting on a private uh, on a private street. The uh, the so-called cul-de-sac is really not a cul-de-sac at all. This is not a system of three private drives. It's actually one continuous strip of pavement. It's pavement. It's really one private drive. Um, cul-de-sac. If you look at the language of 25527D2 has a closed end. This cul-de-sac does not have a closed end. It, it, it's simply a circle in the middle of an otherwise continuously paved area. So it is not a cul-de-sac. It's a single private drive. The, the violations of the subdivision and land development ordinance that uh, Dan and the committee noted uh, remain violations. And uh, we wonder whether it's possible uh, for a compliant plan to be put together for this property. We know that there have been other plans done in the past. Apparently there was one done some years ago with a cul-de-sac, but I don't think that one was ever brought to you. And uh, uh, there continue to be a lot of issues here. So uh, Ms. Stern put her finger on a very important point, 
and that is that waivers should be granted only in the case of hardship. And it seems to me that when you have a situation where developer would prefer not to comply with requirements for public streets or for private streets, and instead wishes to use a private driveway concept, that waivers in that situation are inappropriate. I would say that the only time waivers are appropriate is where you cannot come up with a plan that's compliant with code. And clearly, we don't have that here. Um, that's the essence of, of uh, our position on this. We, we, think, uh, we think the slopes are very definitely steep uh, to a greater extent than what was shown on the plans that we saw. And uh, there's also uh, water in various areas of this property that we think is going to make it very difficult to develop. Uh, it's a very sensitive site, as those of you who have walked it know. And um, uh, if, a, if a compliant plan can be put together for this site, uh, it seems to me it's going to be very difficult to preserve the natural amenities and develop this many lots. Thank you. Jim, can I ask a question? How many neighbors do you represent, and how many from Lower Mary, and how many from Radnor? Uh, Rough numbers. Can I have a show of hands? Is everybody that's here in this group? Are you representing all of them, Jim, or are you just... Uh, I'm representing a group. I'm not necessarily representing everybody in the room, but we, at our meetings, we've had upwards of 20 people. Hey, can we have the same show of hands? How many Radnor? And then how many Lower Mary? Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment? I want to thank you for your attention to this matter. My name is John Devlin. I'm an attorney, and I live at 1440 County Line Road. I am directly impacted by the proposed development submitted by Mr. Bentley. And this is my, really my first introduction into what you do, and I want to thank you. I learned from Jim, uh, who is the attorney of the Ad Hoc Committee of the Neighbors uh, that we've created in this a neighborhood that each one of you serve here uh, for no income. I was shocked to learn that, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank each and every one of you uh, for the time that you take every week to listen to the plans, because we all applaud people like Mr. Bentley who come forward uh, with a plan to develop undeveloped property. With the attention that you give to the neighbors who come here with their Concerns. Many people are lay people, unfamiliar with the process. I've observed that each and every one of you have taken the time to listen to their concerns very carefully. And uh, the purpose of my visit with you today is to speak on behalf of the neighbors. Uh, we share Mr. Bentley's uh, repeated comment about good planning. We adopt good planning. We want good planning. But when I looked at the plan, that's being submitted here. And by the way, just by way of background, a Professor Mulroney, who's here today from Villanova, and who is also directly impacted by this plan because he owns parcels, uh, a parcel directly contingent to the McClure. Professor and I met with Mr. Kotler on Thursday at Attorney Greenfield's office. And I was rather shocked to learn that Attorney Kotler, Mr. Kotler was unable to tell us exactly how wide these driveways would be. He was unable to tell us or identify for us the diameter of the circle, which I thought was rather surprising. Uh, he was unable to address the issue concerning the abutment of building number 12 almost directly upon the wetlands in the corner, which we think is a highly significant issue because I can tell you that the area does flood. I can tell you that there's an agreement that goes back to 1879 between Mr. Anderson, the previous owner of this parcel, and Mr. Supley, where par Professor lives, giving him repairing rights to that area. When I looked at the plan, it seemed to me that this was an image of a heart attack. And you laugh, but I, I couldn't help but conclude we're trying to shoehorn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight residential parcels, which will be approximately 3,000 square foot, maybe give or take 
10 or 20 percent into one driveway system. That does not comport with our understanding of good planning. That does not comport with our understanding of any attention to the health or safety of this plan. At a minimum, a public street is required here, at a basic minimum. Not a private street, not a private driveway, a public street with the sidewalks, the granite curbing, the access for fire, health, and rescue to enter onto that parcel and to address any unforeseen or unforeseeable emergencies. This plan doesn't address that whatsoever. And we'll be here until the cows come home with a discussion about variances. And we'll hear all these pleas about economic problems we're all having. The fact of the matter is, this is nothing more than a heart attack on paper. And I've seen nothing in my conversation with Mr. Kotler, who's an affable, friendly individual, other than the shock plan, which does indicate that it is feasible to put in a public street. Now, whether or not Mr. Bentley wants to have a conversation with the PennDOT about access to the uh, avenue is his decision, not ours. But this plan does show that a public street is viable. I couldn't help but laugh about the conversation about the threat of taking down the, the wall on Lancaster Avenue. If anybody has driven up and down Lancaster Avenue, you will see that the stone wall has been subject to poachers. The stone wall has been knocked down. The stone wall would no longer function as a wall. You'll see there's a ripple effect. There's actually areas where the wall has been completely removed. So we applaud comments by individuals concerning the placement of a sidewalk on Lancaster Avenue. Absolutely, you're right, Ms. Bogosian. There is a little cow path there, and that should be a sidewalk. That should be a sidewalk to avoid people from walking on Lancaster Avenue or anybody who has to make that trip up that hill to Villanova who lives at the apartments or coming out of the McDonald's. Conversations about the trees and the landscaping is nothing more than an attempt to divert the panel, the commissioners, from the true issue involved in this case, which is the health and safety, not only the occupants of that plan proposal, but people like me, my neighbors. We have retained counsel. We're in the process of retaining an engineer. We're highly organized. We're vigorous in our opposition to these plans. I'm new to this process. I'm rather shocked that people can come into the panel here and present a sketch plan without adducing or providing you who are working for nothing or us who are directly impacted with information about the scope or the width of the driveways. I think that's outrageous. I think it's a waste of people's time. I think it may indicate that this is not a serious plan. I took three or four hours off on a Thursday afternoon to meet Mr. Mr. Kotler. I thought in good faith we would be able to adduce information about this plan that would allow us to work together to see if we could address these common issues of public safety and public health and public concerns. I was stunned because none of these plans were presented other than the plan that's on the shelf right there concerning the conservation easement which may have tax implications beneficial to the builder and not to the township. I've asked every person available to be present for these meetings and I can assure you that they will remain available and they will attend every meeting at this level, at the level of the Board of Commissioners and through any court proceedings if necessary. We oppose this plan. We oppose it because it is in violation of any concept of health or safety. This is nothing more than a heart attack on paper. I want to thank you for your time. I echo everything that Attorney Greenfield has told you today. Thank you, Mr. Devlin. <laughs> yes, sir, please state your name and address. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Mulroney. I'm at 1045 East Lancaster Avenue, downstream from the uh, project. I have a bit of a different um, 
stake in the enterprise. You'll have to forgive me because my cartography is not quite of the quality of Mr. Bentley's. And it's also a little harder to see. The, um, my property, my, the property of my wife and myself, is uh, just to the west of Unkerford Park. Uh, the house is a 1796 former toll house, or rather toll keeper's house on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and there are three um, items in the property. The property is listed on the 1988 Inventory of Historic Properties as, and is in the process of listing on the National Register. The house, again, 1796, was built for the toll keeper. It wasn't the toll booth. The toll booth was a bit down the hill about at um, uh, the intersection of Airedale and Lancaster. The toll keeper walked up the hill to uh, this house. There are two other features on the property. <clears throat> and ones that are of more concern to me in the house. Uh, here is the foundation of a blacksmith shop. The blacksmith shop was, uh, again, about 1795, 1796. This is only the foundation. But Unkerford Park was a staging area for teams uh, pulling freight wagons out of Philadelphia and teams coming from Lancaster. They'd switch teams in Lancaster Park and the blacksmith shop serviced the teams and the wagons and so forth. The, uh, the second or the third item on the property is a sheep shed. The, uh, the sheep shed is not quite as old as the house, but it's certainly older than I am. And my particular problem on this? Yeah, good for you. Or maybe not. Who's controlling? That's right. Oh, a more. <laughs> All that does is expose the idiosyncrasies of my cartography, but I stand humbled. <laughs> I stand humbled before you. The, um, uh, my problem is that the pond that we've talked about uh, starts here, passes through the intervening property in the stream. The stream runs through the backyard, past the smitty, past the, uh, <laughs> the elderly sheep shed, through the corner of Unkerford Park, and then through a culvert under County Line Road running into uh, uh, across the street. The problem is that while the stream in its ordinary configuration is pretty unimpressive, a foot of water, the neighborhood deer, and occasionally the foxes uh, come and drink, but nothing very spectacular until it rains. Uh, when it rains, not just a nice uh, a dropping of dew from the leaves of this forthcoming property, but when it rains, the creek backs up here at the culvert, and uh, there is a, a real flooding potential for my Smithy's Foundation and for my elderly sheep shed. And this is not uh, an academic problem. Twice within the last three years, the, in really, really heavy rains, the water has backed up from the culvert within a foot of the sheep shed and a um, foot and a half of the foundation of the smitty. Now, our house is very small. You will see that It's not very seasonal. Uh, you'll, you'll see that I'm no better a photographer than I am a, uh, a cartographer. And this really doesn't show what I wanted to, but it's the only thing I had in my bureau drawer. The um, smitty is here out of the picture, and the sheep shed is here. But the, uh, the stream has backed up uh, in the last, as I say, within several feet of both of those within the last, twice within the last three years. And my concern is that while the McClure property in its present configuration has got long grass and trees and shrubs and so forth and so forth, so that with these several exceptions, there's not really clear and present danger. My concern is that with 12 roofs, 12 driveways, a street or a lane or whatever you want to call it, 
plus neatly manicured, manicured uh, lawns by people who really want that grass short because they've paid $750,000 for a house, that my flooding danger is going to be significantly increased. And so I ask you to take that into account uh, in whatever appropriate way as you go through the planning process here. One further thing, if I might add, about the wall and the sidewalk. The stone wall is about three feet from the curb of Lancaster Avenue. It is not a thoroughfare. The, um, if, you, if you remove the stone wall and put it on the sidewalk, you'll be doing no favor whatsoever to the residents of the houses. We'll have to listen to Villanova University undergraduates coming back on weekends from Kelly's. Now, uh, there is a clear and present danger. And because our house is very close to the road, I can testify as to that from personal experience. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Pardon me, who's Mr. Cutler? Is that your partner? Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Bernadette Holroyd. Um, I am a neighbor, one of the neighbors, and I am one of the Lower Marion neighbors, and I just wanted to thank Ms. Stern um, for appreciating our views and our input, even though we don't live in Radnor Township. Um, and just very briefly, I uh, grew up in Browning Lane at Radnor Township. Um, my siblings st still live in Radnor Township, um, on Browning Lane, two of them. And I now live in Orchard Way, as I stated. So I've been in this area um, quite a long time. And I just wanted to say that the whole flavor of the main line as we know it has been eroded by what I consider overdevelopment. And I understand that this property will probably be developed. However, I would just submit to you um, humbly that 12 units is just way too much. So thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Anthony Wilson, and I'm at uh, 1439 County Line Road. And uh, I just, uh, from a, I applaud the idea that uh, Susan brought up in terms of uh, maybe having uh, Laura and Marion take a look at that. And uh, especially because <clears throat> I'm I'm right at the corner house, so there's there's a there's a couple issues that come to my mind. Uh, one is there is a lot of traffic, a lot more than people think there is. Um, the cars uh, often around five o'clock uh, back up from Airedale all the way up to the top of the street, and people are constantly taking U turns and you know trying to drive around. So it's a pretty crowded area, uh, especially since you know Villanova has been expanding over the last you know decade or so. Uh, the other side is um, a lot of the houses that are across the street are, are Wallace Warner homes. Uh, I don't know if they're officially historic, but they're getting close to be. There's a number of you know people, uh, you know, groups that have. Uh, uh, you know, demonstrated, you know, in terms of seeing Wallace Warner homes. And uh, they are larger properties. And I think the, the, the notion of uh, homo, homogeneous, uh, homogeneity in terms of looking directly across the street is a, is a very relevant issue because um, those are, we are the people that are in these homes and they do have large frontages in front of them. Uh, and I think, you know, if you put a bunch of compressed houses, I'm concerned about, you know, how that actually looks on, on one side. And then the driveways that are going to be going in, the four that are proposed that be, given the traffic, uh, given the things, I, I really question some of the safety issues there. Because uh, it's just from the standpoint, I know a lot of the folks have been on the inside of the driveway, but really trying to make... Uh, right-hand turns and, you know, going in or a left-hand turn, uh, given the speed uh, that goes on there. And if you check the records, you'll find that, uh, you know, the Radnor Police Department makes a minor fortune, you know, sitting on the side watching people run that stop signs uh, 
all the time. So, so those those are the three big issues that uh, you know I think uh, should be looked at, including the uh, the side of uh, maybe engaging the Lower Marion Township to have their input. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anne Marie DeCane. I'm a Radnor Township resident. We're at um, 101, excuse me, North Lowry's Lane um, in Lancaster, uh, Lancaster, at the corner of Lancaster and Lowry's Lane. Um, I apologize, I wasn't really prepared just to speak tonight, so I've just been kind of taking some notes as I've listened to the presentations tonight. Um, my concern is clearly the number of homes. Um, it's a four acre property, am I correct? I'm not sure the exact acreage. So 12 homes on a four acre property equates to less than a third, maybe a quarter acre per, per home. Seems very dense to me for that area. Um, I do agree that um, we do need to consider the Lower Marion Township residents, which do have much larger homes. I have a larger home, as I said, right on the corner of Lancaster and Lowry's. It's a 1928 home, close to 5,000 square feet. I'm concerned that my property value will actually go down. Um, that, um, you know, why can't we build four or five, um, four or five homes on that property, you know, close to an acre um, per home, I think seems appropriate in that area. Um, I'm also concerned, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I'm very concerned about the property values. I, I'm concerned my house is already on Lancaster Avenue. It's a, what I consider a historic home. We're the third owners of this home. I've had the pleasure of meeting um, the last surviving child of the, of the original um, owner and builder of the home. He was a stonemason, um, Victor Mandis, um, in the area of a very famous build, um, Ardmore Presbyterian Church, very famous stonemason. I'm, I've, for I consider a very lovely home, and I, I don't want 12 homes, which I think will take the proper, my home value down. Uh, we also have neighbors on Cushman. Um, there's a house, I think, that just went up for sale again today. Uh, last year, it was up on the market for 850000 Now their property backs up to this property. Now it's on today for $749,000. And I believe the direct result is that there's going to be 12 homes now in their backyard. Right now, it's a big um, open space. And now there'll be, 12, there'll be 12 homes there. And I think that has directly impacted what they're going to get for the value of their home. Um, that's another concern. I'm not sure if this is, um, I keep hearing talk about this sidewalk, and I think it is going to be a sidewalk to nowhere, and I have a big concern because, as I said, my house is on the corner of Lancaster and Lowry's. Um, there is a um, bus stop right there right now, which is a different issue, but people, and we have a stone wall, I don't know if you are familiar with my, where my home is too, but we have a stone wall very close to Lancaster Avenue, maybe within two feet of Lancaster Avenue, and it's been there since 1928. Um, there is a path that runs People walk up and down my property. There are, um, we're constantly cleaning up McDonald's cups, you know, cigarette butts, so on and so forth. I think if you just, if you, I'm concerned that if you put a sidewalk on Lancaster Avenue that stops at Cushman, it's going to stop, essentially stop at nowhere. And then what happens? Are you then going to take over and say, well, we've got a sidewalk to there. And now we're going to need to take some of the property that belongs to the homeowner on Cushman and Lowry's. There's, there's three homes. Um, there's three homes, two on Cushman and one on Lancaster. And I'm afraid, are you going to come over at some point and say, we, you need, Mrs. DeCain, you need to take down your stone wall so we can extend the sidewalk up Lancaster Avenue to this, um, to this bus stop, um, concern of mine. I don't see any value to having that sidewalk on, um, I guess that would be the north side of Lancaster Avenue. Um, let's see what else. I guess that's, well, um, and also my wall is constantly um, damaged. People sit on my wall, wait for the bus stop, slates are knocked off. Um, so there's, there's been damage to that. And I guess that's it. So I would hope that you would consider that, um, you know, I think that four or five homes on this property could actually help the value of, of our homes in the area. Um, and I don't think comparables, um, Comparable homes are not the ones on the other side, on the south side of Lancaster Avenue. Comparables are not what's Hawthorne, um, Garrett Avenue. Not, none of those would be considered comparables, in my opinion. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I will throw it back to the Planning Commission uh, just for final comments as to the overall plan. As the applicant is looking for our um, uh, discussion, uh, obviously we're not making any recommendations. We're just giving our individual views on the plan uh, for this, and obviously no uh, move or motion will be taken tonight because this is at sketch plan phase. So if anyone wants to jump in. Kathy? Skip? Uh, I have a question for the engineer. Um, I'm not saying that this would be a better plan, but I've heard that um, with the, you could have a driveway for two properties. Um, have you thought or even looked at a plan that has, let's say, four homes on county line with flag lots down towards Lancaster? So there'd be eight houses instead of 12, something like that? or um, I'm not the engineer, but he's not here, so I'll act like the engineer. The, um, we've done five or six different plans. We had a loop road at one point. Um, the trouble is your ordinances, um, we really were <coughs> reduced to what we showed, and we believe it is uh, the closest thing to a by-right plan. I think it is impossible in Radnor Township to probably have a by-right plan unless you maybe had like one or two houses on this property. <coughs> but um, a totally, totally by-right plan. Um, it's almost... Um, it's almost impossible to do with all the ordinances. Your ordinances actually contradict each other in different places. Um, but we, we've looked at having a, a more flag lots. Um, you know, you have a funny ordinance that says you're not allowed to have a common drive um, down between two houses, which almost every common drive that exists in America goes between two houses. I mean, mm -hmm. technically, you could have a common drive that went through Kansas and there would be one in Iowa and one in Pennsylvania that, you know, broke your ordinance. So, um, and then you also have an ordinance directly um, that says that if you have a single um, dog leg lot, it has, the, how, the lot has to be two acres. So we did look at that. Mm -hmm. Does okay. that answer your question? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? The one other thing that I didn't make mention of it earlier, but some, one of the neighbors came up and did mention about the traffic. <clears throat> this is actually a question for Dan. Dan, one of our uh, saldo ordinances says that the Board of Commissioners may request a traffic study. Is that when, when, how operationally, how would, at preliminary. preliminary, after we approve it or mm -hmm. as part of they'll as, look at it and then kick part it off? Okay. Um, that was it. Thank you. Any other? To address that, if I may, since it turned, uh, Mr. Bentley had an opportunity to speak, there was a traffic survey done, and the result of the traffic survey was to plant a four-way stop sign system at the intersection of Orchard and County Line Road. Directly in front of my home, there is a stop sign. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't point out to you and, and echo what uh, Tony Wilson just told you, the traffic there is out of control. As a matter of fact, you might be interested to know that the speed limit on County Line Road is actually higher than the speed limit on Lancaster Avenue. Our speed limit is 30 miles an hour, whereas the speed limit on Lancaster Avenue is only 25. Uh, that's why I find it very difficult to believe that we can't have a conversation with Mr. Bentley coming forward with some driveways out onto Lancaster Avenue where the speed limit is actually 20% less than it is on County Line Road. Thank you. Okay. Anything further from any planning member? Okay. With that, you can move forward and do what you will. You've heard all the comments from the neighbors in the Planning Commission and Take the comments and good heed. I would like to, before we leave, um, because that's really the only thing on our agenda this evening, um, uh, like to, um, I know that at the Monday night commissioner's meeting, they announced that Dan Malloy would be leaving the township. Um, Dan has been, I've been on the um, township planning commission now going on my sixth year. I know Ed's been almost the same, if not more. And, uh, you know, working with Dan has been a pleasure all these years, and I know that he's done uh, countless years at our township and has been a wonderful asset to our township. And I just wanted to thank him for everything he's done for us and wish him well in his future endeavors.
Thank you. And with that, I will call any old business, being none, any new business. Kathy? Uh, I, I've mentioned several times, I'm sure you're sick of hearing me, that we have some problems with our ordinances. And I think the one that we should press to get corrected is the institutional. Uh, because in light of Villanova University expanding, Eastern expanding, and so forth, if we don't move quickly to improve our institutional ordinance, we're going to be stuck with what we have. And I think we've all been frustrated with the rules that currently exist. Now, I know that the uh, commissioners are looking into hiring somebody to go through all the zoning ordinances. Um, I mentioned to the township manager that Delaware County Planning Department does do this type of work. And perhaps they could talk to uh, Delaware County to just pull the institutional part out and work on that uh, so that we can get some good things in place. And then down the road, when this other group is hired and we want to tweak it further, we could do it. But I think we really need to move quickly in this area here more than maybe any other because of the impact that the uh, institutions have on Radnor Township. What's your thoughts? Uh, I would echo your concern that obviously one of our uh, uh, Ordin uh, in our institutional ordinance um, is very much lacking and opens us up for some development that may not be appropriate for our township. Um, you know, I know that you did speak with the township manager, and I, I would echo that we probably need to look to doing something, and hopefully if we can get this, if we do go forward with the overall, maybe they can do it in segments, or if we seek Delaware County's advice, but I will, I will absolutely um, put that forth to the commissioners and see what their yeah. thoughts are. I think we might want to, if it's okay for me to mention this, Mark, um, maybe lo lobby each of our own commissioners to get moving in this regard, to do something about it quickly. There, is, <laughs> well, there was a subcommittee there, that was disbanded, I believe, and they're now looking, Susan, your committee is looking at... We're actually, we did our part where we there were several of us on the committee, and we interviewed 12 firms, got whittled down to four. Actually, the interviews for that are being done by the full board of commissioners tomorrow night, 6.15, okay. right in this room. So anybody who wants Stay to tuned. come and see the four planning firms that uh, you know, submitted proposals that we narrowed down the field. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all came up with a list of things to be starting to think about, and the institution is certainly near the top of it. OK. Yeah. How soon do you think, let's say, they make a decision within the next two months on one of these groups. How, what's their length of time on actually getting some laws in place? Well, them pre presenting to the township. Well, let me give you context. When we did the and interviews. And then the, the commissioners have to change it. They had about a nine month, each of the 12 firms, Doug, refresh my memory, each of the 12 firms that submitted proposals, and actually Mr. Greenfield looked at them as well. Um, I think they said six to eight to nine months of a review phase, prioritized list of you know zoning amendments and sal really focusing on zoning that needed uh, you know immediate attention, and then presentation, it, it, and that included the public, but then presentation for the formal adoption process. Mm -hmm. So I mean we're still thinking. So we're easily a probably year. two years out before anything was actually put in code in Renner Township. I, I would think so. Yes. Okay, that's my point. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I, no, I, we, I, I echo your concerns, and mm -hmm. there are certain processes that have to take place, and I know. unfortunately, they <laughs> are lengthy processes, and um, and there's always what is the what is the uh, Peter? What is the law? I can't think of it. When you can submit ahead of time to secure your rights if you know a, a zoning ordinance change is coming. Oh, the vesting. Oh, yeah, vest, vesting. Yeah, you can vest, yeah. Um, but, you know, the vesting works, sorry, thank you. The vesting works best for, you know, land developments. We have a little more power with just pure building permits, but it's part of, it's part of the MPC. It's section uh, 508.4 of the MPC 
has that says you know once you file for preliminary plan approval no ch no change in the in in any ordinance can affect in any way your 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 ability to get your approval done or granted now are there any specific things in the in the institutional ordinance if you could pick two or three things out of the whole thing that you would want to address Kathy what do you What I've seen is parking. And then now I would have to quite truthfully reread the whole works to say I think this is a problem. This is, but the one that just jumps right out at me is parking. Uh, because I think we're looking today at people who have a lot more cars than what they had maybe 30 or 40 years ago when this was developed on there. So that would be number one. But I think you need to look at the whole institutional thing as a group with setbacks. Uh, one thing we ran into on zoning, several things that came into zoning, was the height of the buildings and the internal part of the campus where it doesn't affect the neighborhoods. It sometimes makes sense to allow a taller building than uh, three stories so that you have more open space around it. So it's things like this. So I think probably what affects the township the most right now is traffic and parking. Uh, so if I had to pick one, it was that, but I would like to look at the whole institutional uh, unit itself, both height regulations, setbacks, side yards, the okay. whole thing. Okay. You know, couldn't we address parking, I mean, in the appropriate way, on a much faster track? Uh, there could be a way we could handle that. But again, it would take some time. Do you all remember change. that we tried to do that? Don't go away, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim Greenfield, We don't had go away. meetings. Jim Greenfield was in there. I was Speak in there. Around. Doug and Susan were in there. We had lengthy meetings trying to bring these exact points that you make before the public so that we could talk about making the important changes we need to make to our institutional zoning. And the commissioners took a different tact on it. And, and, that was, and then they decided the better way to go, because of, you know, there's a lot of contention, was to hire professional planners to take over. And we're in that process now. I think what we might be able to do is to say we want this to be first on their agenda. You know, we've identified this as an ongoing problem. Uh, these specific areas are things we'd really like them to look at first as opposed to other zoning problems that we have in the township. I know there are many. Um, but from our, the things we've seen recently, we know that the institutional zoning mm -hmm. is, is, has been a problem, and we'd like to update that. Um, I don't know if there's a consensus among us or other, other boards. I know there are our other zoning areas are also important. I don't know if there's a consensus that that's the most important, certainly one of the most important, and perhaps we could ask them to address that first. Well, I, I think you're correct in that, but I'm thinking we need a Band-Aid here. Uh, mm. and now, maybe you don't agree with me, but let, let's just look at parking. If you had a different parking situation existing, it would help a lot of the neighborhood congestion of having students park on the neighborhood streets like you have with Eastern. Kat, uh, oh, go ahead. Kathy, it actually gets, it's a, actually a step further when we talked about this in, in the, some of the interviews is how we count students in this township is the crux of the problem because ironically on-campus students don't have the cars, it's the commuter students and the nature of higher education has changed. But on-campus students have cars too. Not as many as the commuters and that's where the real growth has come in, at least in this township in, in, at our universities with graduate schools expanding and online learning but then they come to campus for periodic things and that's where we're getting the increase in traffic and, and uh, and half the, half the problem is the parking, and half of the problem is the, is the traffic getting there. And that's really Big the time. issue. Right. You know, lately the commissioners have asked us to do things that are not what we ordinarily do. Uh, open this issue tonight for public comment, uh, revisit a particular plan. Um, maybe we could make a recommendation to the commissioners to reopen or re reconsider. Uh, punting a little bit on this parking issue to a professional entity and perhaps instead revisit it now and f drill in on it a little. Uh, I'm active in Upper Marion in other ways and uh, I think they changed, not in a way that perhaps you would like here, but or we would like here, but they changed the retail parking uh, ordinance for maybe for the target, but um, within about eight months. So it, there are ways to do it. 
if we really want to and if the commissioners might be willing to reconsider. The MPC provides, you know, typically the way we've done ordinance work, at least as long as I've been on the Planning Commission, is that we are given an ordinance from the Board of Commissioners. It's introduced at a meeting and then it's passed to us for review. They actually, we did a zoning class, I did a zoning class here a few months ago and learned that provided under the MPC, the Planning Commission actually of our own volition can work on an ordinance and present it to the Board of Commissioners and ask them to consider it. Right. So there's really nothing that prevents us from doing some of that work. Now, the last few months we've had meetings that have, and plans that have prevented us from doing that kind of work. But maybe in the, you know, if things slow down, uh, in the summertime we, you know, some, we don't always have meetings, maybe we can start to think about doing some of that work and bring it forth to the commissioners rather than waiting for them to bring it to us. Well, I know when we did the 1988 land use update, uh, there were recommendations in there for zoning changes. I don't think they were done yet. And this is like 20 years later. Uh, and what happened with the last one, I'm sure there was some zoning recommendations in there. It just doesn't seem to happen. Unless you hold a flame to their butt, they're not going to move. And I might be a thorn in your side, but I really feel that this needs to be done. And uh, we need to put some pressure on the ones that can make the decision to get it done, at least this one part. Because I've seen how these things move over the year. They just don't move. So would you, would you like f for us to um, make like a resolution or make a motion to ask them to, to I don't know. give us to look, to, to ask us to accelerate or at least look at that and discuss it in, in our next planning meeting? Um, I mean, that's May. I don't well, think we need to ask them to, uh, for permission to discuss it. I think we can discuss it. But discussing doesn't get it moving. I think we need to talk to the commissioners to see if there's maybe a way of moving a portion of this faster, like work on it over the summer and enact something maybe in the fall. And I think this could be done if you gave a section of it to Delaware County to do. We don't have the power to do that. But I think they would do a better job of it than we would because they do this for other townships. Well, you know, you just raised an interesting question about power, and I'm not suggesting that, you know, we can take over the job of the commissioners, but we asked Dan for opinions and things like that, Dan or his successor. Couldn't we ask him to, or our solicitor, to look at some ordinances? Perhaps Lower Marion has a good uh, public institution language, maybe somebody we don't even think of off the, the cuff, we could get this information on our own, is what I'm suggesting, perhaps. I could get copies of different ones in Delaware County. Now, whether they're good or not, I, that, I don't know. It depends when they're written. But I know Delaware County Community College has a fairly good-sized campus. I think we may be more impacted than most of the schools, most of the townships around here. Uh, Swarthmore is a much smaller campus. Uh, but I can't think of any township off the top of my head that has the density of universities and public institutions that we have. Um, I would agree yeah. with you. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you. You have a lot of schools in this. We have a lot of uh, just not universities. We have private schools. We've got the American College, which I think mm -hmm. still is PI over there. Yep. We've got a lot of places that are um, in that realm. Um, I think probably the way we could do right now is, is, you know, basically we could adopt a resolution that we could ask the commissioners to expedite the PI and looking at the parking um, and see where it goes from them. I do believe, um, Peter, we're, we, are, we do have the ability to look at it on our own um, through the MPC, um, but it would have to then go back up to them. They'd have to then approve it mm -hmm. to come, bring it back down to us, right. if I'm not mistaken. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and the commissioners but have to. The commissioners have to approve Peter's spending time on it or John Rice, whichever the case may be. Uh, we couldn't just uh, on our own but, assign but that you, to him. Nothing happened. Exactly. Yeah. I th well, I mean, at least we tried that. <laughs> I think at this point in time, and I, and I, 
I would say probably the best thing we could do right now is maybe adopt a resolution where we ask them, we express our, you know, concern over the current state of the PI uh, zoning district mm -hmm. and that it really does need some immediate attention considering the, the, the state of the universities and what's happening with our universities and ask them if they could expedite in some manner that, that um, area. You know, I, 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 would, I would caution, and I understand you keep saying parking, 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 but parking is only one portion of a zoning code and taking out of context, it would have ultimate ramifications, maybe ramifications that we don't want to have right. happen mm -hmm. and that we do. So, you know, when you're looking at revising a zoning code uh, or portions, specific portions of a zoning code, I really think you need to look at them as a whole, as, you know, the institutional district. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's why I would really, you know, I think that you're right. You'd send something like that to Delaware County or you'd, or you'd get this firm that we're entertaining to really Okay, look at that first. Let's go get on, get on the move here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Mark. I think it would be a mistake just to focus on parking, although it would be a good place to start. You know, we've sat here and talked about lights and noise and athletic fields, mm -hmm. which have been big issues. And, again, if we just change the ratios, how we calculate parking, these institutions, if they want to, are just going to keep buying up the neighbors. I'm not sure that's going to solve the problem. There's other issues. Um, you know, use. We constantly hear... The universities or the schools, they rent out their fields, they rent out their stadiums for other graduations and other events. Maybe they're the other things we have to look at. Right. It's I not agree. just the, I hear you, but I think the parking is one of the bigger things change. But also the, the buildings. We've seen huge buildings, and that's a student's activity center. Therefore, there's no parking tied right. to it. Exactly. So I, I think you got to look at it from, I hate to say it, I think it's an A to Z look, and it's going to take years. And anybody but thinks it's going to get meantime, done soon <laughs> is foolish, but yeah. you know. But, uh, well, I think maybe that's the way to. Why don't we, yeah. you know, adopt the resolution, see how the, we can okay. adopt a resolution that basically the, we would request that the commissioners uh, you know, really look hard and long at the current uh, institutional zoning district and that they move quickly to expedite any, uh, um, any uh, resolution to the issues that we're having and go forward from there and see, see where that takes us. Mark, how do you feel about presenting that? A resolution at a meeting publicly. I have no problem. Okay, good. That. As long as it's unanimous among the yeah. Planning Commission. So I'll make that motion that we pass the resolution and ask the Board of Commissioners to do that. Do I have a second? I second. Any further conversation? Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Very good. You want to word it and then email it to I us will, and I'll we'll give you our something. thoughts? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Um, Great. Okay. Any further new business? Quick, I have a quick comment, uh, only because it was, I fought long and hard for it. Remember when we passed PLU and I was so darn God determined to not have other federally licensed telecommunication <laughs> companies in the public land use for cell phone towers? Just, we got the zoning hearing notice. I, I presume we get it because we're on the Planning Commission. So I just want to let residents know, because not all residents get these notices if they don't live within a certain distance that the, there is an application for a cell phone tower uh, downtown in Wayne uh, at the fire company, and the hearing for it will be May 19th. I, I feel like not every Redner resident is going to get this letter, but they could all potentially feel impacted by, um, by this. And it's a joint venture with the Radnor Fire Company and Metro PCS, a federally licensed. The Board of Commissioners passed our PLU with that in, with the federally licensed companies in their final version. Is that uh, for the fire company or for general cell phone use? It's, it, they're putting it in as a joint uh, application. So, and I, don't, I haven't been to a meeting. I haven't, mm -hmm. I don't know the details of it. I just know that it's a larger tower than they're currently proposed. Um, and they need a, a variety of zoning variances and dimensional variances and all sorts of things. So I just want to let the public know this meeting will be Thursday, May 19th. And are we going to? before the zoning hearing board which was still in the, the meeting is in this room and i do are we going to have general public comment tonight before yes. we end okay well, that's, yeah. that was it okay general public comment any there is on the agenda it says public participation at 1430 county line road but we've already addressed that i believe in allowing public comment on the second right. portion of our agenda with that Motion to adjourn. So moved. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Dan, 